The cold and frosty mornings of the winter months came early. The farmer at Hackenbeck harvested the crops before the heavy snow had a chance to fall and ruin them. He says it'll be here before the weekend, and it'll come with force. It'll keep snowing for several days too, he says. Huh. And how does the farmer know what the weather will do? They have these strange machines called computers now, Toby. They can look at what the weather is doing in other places around the world, and then tell us what the weather will be like here. Toby raised one eyebrow and looked askance towards the tractor. Well, if your farmer's computer is all it's cracked up to be, that means we'll need Thomas here to go out clearing the line with his snowplow. Did you hear that, Terence? Toby says they need me to clear the line. Without me, this railway would grind to a halt. No, what I meant was... Percy's whistle peeped in the distance and a plume of white smoke and steam poured above from the treetops. Careful now, Percy. The tracks are frosty and very slippery. Percy's wheels did indeed slip as he began to break and ended up overshooting the platform. The first few doors of the front carriage were beyond the ramp and Percy had to back the train up to let the passengers out. Oh dear, no wonder the Fat Controller chose me to clear the line. Goodness knows what would happen if Percy was given the job. The platform is this way, Percy. Percy frowned. Well, it's not my fault. There's ice coating the rails. Every engine knows icy rails must be handled with great care. Even at slow speeds, these trails are treacherous. He looked across to the station's goods siding, where an open wagon full of rock salt had been left. He consulted with the station master about it. He told them Daisy was supposed to take it to grit the rails that morning, but had strongly objected to pulling dirty grit and left it behind instead. So Thomas, with his firebox ablaze and his boiler comfortably warm, collected the salt wagon from the siding and an open brake van. Thomas took pride in the operation, but his colleagues were unimpressed. He pulled into Percy's line and came to a stop just ahead of the train. Try and stop in the right place next time, Percy, otherwise you'll end up in the back of me. Percy muttered something under his breath while Thomas set off at a steady pace down the line, while the guard collected salt in a shovel and spread it along the rails to help melt the frost. Percy followed some distance behind, the grit crunching under his wheels as he did. For the rest of the journey, Percy had no problem stopping at platforms, but Thomas still would not keep quiet about it. The computer's predictions were correct. The snow overnight was relentless. By morning, the ground was buried, and the crew had to dig to the shed doors to reach the engines. Once their fires had been lit, the engines began to wake. Oh, I suppose I shall have to wear that horrid, awkward snowplow today. Thomas grumbled to no one in particular. Ah well, as long as it keeps the line running on schedule, I don't particularly mind. Well, as long as Percy stops at the right platforms, it'll run on schedule. It's really not that important a job, Thomas. Oh, really? And what would you do today if I wasn't around to clear the line? I'd clear it myself if it meant doing my jobs properly. And failing that, Percy could do it. Or Mavis, or even Daisy if it came to that. We're not unfamiliar with clearing the lines. We've had to do it for years when you've been at Knapford and the snow started to fall up here. You've probably never heard about it, because we don't tend to boast about it like some engines do. <laughs> some time afterwards, Thomas was clearing the tracks around Farquhar Station with his snowplow. The signalman had begun to dig away at the snow from the goods siding, and with the help of the firelighters and some hot ashes, the sidings were cleared by the time Thomas came to collect the salt wagon. I'll be back soon. He's going to be like this all winter, isn't he? And the farmer said it would be a long one. 
Oh, I wish there was something we could do to bring him back down. Well, Thomas has never been one to happily wear a snowplow. Perhaps this is what will finally make him see some sense? Thomas reached Nafford Junction and had a friendly exchange with James, who had been also clearing the main line. James agreed with Thomas. It's a big responsibility, making sure the line is safe for the other engines. Thomas had become so proud of the job that he had forgotten how inclined to boasting James usually was, and couldn't wait to get back to Farquhar and talk more about his important job. The points into the good sidings that Farquhar had seized up with the cold night. They were locked so that the line diverted into the siding, but the Sigmund was confident the rock salt and ashes would thaw them by the time they were next needed. When the Sigmund heard Thomas's whistle again, it went to switch the points. The ice had not yet melted. Quickly he grabbed a red flag from his rack and ran out to warn Thomas and his crew, but he slipped on the frosty planks and dropped the flag onto the line below. Ooh! Percy and Toby heard the whistle and were disappointed to see the same smug grin on Thomas's face as he approached. Well, there you have it. The line is clear and safe for any engine, and in record time too. Wait! Stop! Thomas! Slow down! Whoa! Hey! The sharp blade of his snowplow had sliced through the buffers as almost easily as it did through the snow, and now was embedded into the frosty earth and gravel that lay beyond the siding's end. The salt wagon had been jolted forward harshly in the incident, and now the salt had poured through the cracks in its frame and piled up around Thomas's rear end. Luckily, Thomas's driver and fireman and guard were all unscathed, but Thomas was cold, ashamed, and covered in grit. You silly engine! Those were perfectly good buffers that you just ruined, and I need a new flag. Why'd you come so quickly? I was in a hurry to get back to the sheds. I wanted to gloat about how important it was that I was clearing the line, but now I realise it's just another job. Just like all jobs, it's worth doing well. I've not done it very well, have I? Credits where credit's due. You've cleared the line splendidly, but this foolhardiness has damaged your snowplow. We'll have to have Percy clear the line until yours can be mended. At least now you understand that actually doing your job is more important than boasting about having the job. Toby took away the unhurt brake van and collected a new truck to recover what remained of the rock salt, while Percy brought a crane to clear the wreckage of the old salt wagon. Once the mess had been cleared and the crew could reach Thomas's back end, they fixed a strong rope between his and Percy's buffer beam. Then, with Toby coupled behind him to provide extra strength, Percy and Toby brought Thomas back onto the rails. Percy and Toby waited with Thomas while his front was being checked over until it was time for their trains. I'm sorry I was so rude. I let my job get in the way of my sense. I realise now how irritating I must have been. We understand, Thomas. Myself and Percy, we'd both be lying if we said we wouldn't have acted the same way. Under the same circumstances, of course. So, Thomas. I hear you decided to venture beyond snow and start ploughing earth instead. But that's my job. Don't worry, Terence. Your ploughing isn't a risk. In fact, it'll be some time before I plough again. Perhaps I should take up predicting the weather instead. Mm -hmm.